Hey guys, um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these very basic plastic ornaments. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. I think they're two for a dollar. <clears throat> But my Dollar Tree didn't have these out for a long time. And I went ahead and picked up a pack at Hobby Lobby. I think there was like eight of them for $7.99. I got them 50% off, so it was $3.50. So honestly, it was better than the dollar store, I think. Anyway, they come with, you know, the little metal top piece that goes in. So I wanted to show you what it starts out like. Um, I had done... a several of these ornaments and I I learned along the way because the first ones what I did was I did my my mold and I attached I glued it I let it dry and then I painted it I discovered that it is better to paint it first I of course used um, well I didn't use DIY actually. Um, I have this container of Dixie Belle paint that is kind of leftover and I wanted to use it and I wanted to make these look kind of antique, kind of aged. Um, so I went ahead and used that paint. Normally I use DIY paint. So here's the, you know, what they look like. And then this is what it would look like painted. I didn't necessarily think that you needed to see me paint this. You know, you just hold it, you paint it. I painted the top as well, okay? Um, I'm going to go through the whole process with you, but I want to show you the different phases here. So then I glued on my, um, my mold. We're going to make molds together, so I'm going to show you about that. I glued that on, and then I painted it, okay? And then... I took a clear wax and I clear waxed it and then I took a dark wax and I dark waxed it and this is the aged um, you know way it came out really kind of cool so I have that one I have the, this one this one And they're, they're plastic. So if you did drop them, the paper clay might break, but the ornament probably wouldn't. Um, these two are larger um, ones. These two, I can't remember where I picked these up, but it was a pack of just two. And um, so I put the teapot and the teacup on there. And I really thought somebody who loves tea um, might enjoy having these two on their tree. So, um, these are going to go in the antique booth. I don't know if I'm going to put anything around the top or anything. I haven't decided yet, but that's what the, the finished ones, ah, look like. So, let's, let's make some some molds and we're just going to do this one together I'll do this one later because I need to paint it and let it dry and blah 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 I just want to show you what they look like prior to doing anything to them which is kind of a bummer because I want to do yeah well anyway so what we're going to do on this one and I'm using Prima or no I'm not I'm using Iron Orchid Designs. This one's called Fleur de Lis. I got this at Jamie Ray Vintage. I also get my air dry clay from Jamie Ray Vintage. Here it is. It's made by IOD. And I have a little ball in here. It's kind of left over. And we're going to do this rooster. What you're seeing, this little white stuff in here, is um, resin because I I do a lot of these in, in resin. But we're going to do air dry clay because we want it to conform to this um, rounded surface. 
and it's easier to do with the clay than it is the resin. Although I like the resin better for furniture or, um, you know, things like that. So you want to push your clay down into the mold really good. And then I just use my finger and pull off the excess. Um, you can use like a putty knife or, you know, a regular butter knife or whatever you want. I hope I'm in frame. Had a couple complaints. <laughs> Rena, could you please be in frame when you're doing a tutorial? Um, I'm sorry guys, I am I'm new to doing tutorials. I've been doing um, videos for, oh gosh, six, seven years. But um, tutorials have never been my strong suit, so I am really trying to get better at them. Okay, let me put a little bit more up here. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this while I'm on camera with you cuz I'm going to put I'm going to put this angel on the other one. And it's really big, but the wings will wrap around and I think it'll be kind of cool. So I'm gonna move that one over. Maybe we'll just show it both ways. We'll show it putting on with uh, while it's clear, and we'll put, put one on while it's um, painted. Well, this is almost a almost a perfect amount of clay. And I'll be honest with you guys; these molds are not cheap. Um, you can find some online that are not as, you know, IOD, but these are really high quality molds. I probably am not <coughs> supposed to, <coughs> excuse me, but um, there have been a few times where I didn't clean my molds right away and they were pretty caked on there and I put them in the dishwasher. I don't think there's a lot of molds that um, are quality enough that you could do that with. Now, I'll be honest with you, this air dry clay um, had gotten hard and I added water to it and kind of uh, manipulated it for a while. So it's a little bit more wet than the actual, you know, how it comes normally. So when you, because yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can tell how wet it is. All right. You always want to store your air dry clay in a sealed manner. All right, let's. Because mine is a little bit more wet, it's going to be harder to get out. But you just kind of want to pull your um, your mold back, and usually it'll start popping out. And my dog is snoring under the table. So, la, la. Now, this one's got some imperfections in it. I'm totally okay with that. It's going to make it look more aged. And that rooster is going to go like that. Don't worry. We're going to glue it on. Let's see if we can get this one out. Oh, that came out really nicely. And that one is 
that's going to go on there. Look how that came out. All right. So we're going to just use some Craft Fantastic Glaze and Glue. Um, you know, I have Gorilla Glue, which would work. I have E6000. There's a whole bunch of glues that would be perfectly fine. Um, but this is what I used yesterday and therefore what I'm going to use today. I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring, but she is really snoring. All right. <laughs> so just using my finger, you can use um, a, a paintbrush if you want. And you don't want like a ton. You just want enough um, that it's going to stick. You don't want it to squeeze out the sides. If it does, it's not the, a major deal, but I like to run my finger over it and take off any real excess and get rid of it. All right. I think we'll put the rooster on this one. See, it's, you see how it's wanting to slide all around. Okay. So you kind of want to, you could even like let that lay there until it gets tacky. What I mean by that is for the glue to kind of start to set up a little bit and then it gets more just sticky instead of liquidy. But I'm wanting to put the rooster a little bit down because your top's going to go on and it's going to come down around here and you don't want it to inter, um, intervene with your, your mold. So that rooster seems to be on there pretty good. I'm going to set that aside and we'll put on the angel. The other reason this is probably going to stick better with it painted is it, it's got something to stick to instead of just the clear plastic um, the you know the paint gives it something to hold on to a little bit more well that's gonna be pretty so you can kind of press on it because you you do want it to mold and conform to that um, oval shape you know, a lot of people, when they do these, they do them with round balls. I um, decided to do them with these sort of more, I don't know what you call these. They're still oval shaped, but they're a little flatter. And you can gently manipulate this without doing too much damage to the detail. Um, do be gentle, but you can push on it. I have some gaps on some of those, uh, the teacup and the teapot where it, you know, was having a hard time adhering completely flat. Um, and what I did with those is I just kind of pushed some paint down in that crack. I'll show you here in a second. I just didn't have time to sit there and hold it for five minutes on each little section. So I just dealt with uh, let's see. So you can kind of see um, down in there. And I don't know, to me, it kind of makes it look more aged and just old and handmade. Okay. You know what I did? Oh, here it is. Okay, so we're painted except for this. Um, and you can paint it now if you wanted to. Like, you could totally paint that while the, the clay is still moist. That's not a problem. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm going to set these aside. 
and we're going to move on to this one which is obviously already painted and has its molds and um, what I'm going to do is start with clear wax and I'm going to clear wax this entire ornament. This is just uh, basic clear wax I got from Home Depot, nothing fancy. Um, you can get clear wax at Jamie Ray Vintage, but, um, I, you know, I, I have found there are certain items that um, you don't have to go top of the line with, and uh, wax is, for me, one of those things. I do have some of uh, the wax that Jamie sells um, for furniture pieces, but for something like this, no. Okay. So, let me set that down. I need to cut a piece of... I've got a t-shirt here. And I'm just going to kind of wipe away some of the excess. And now I'm going to take my dark wax, which I should probably show you the wax. This is the wax I'm using, the clear. And this is the dark wax. So I have two different brushes. And we're going to take the dark wax and put it all over the ornament. <clears throat> it really <clears throat> highlights those details. Get it really good into all the details of your whatever your mold is that you are working with. If you're wanting it to look aged, nothing brings you out of that element other than seeing the bright color that you missed. And you can do these any color. Um, a lot of people do you know, various colors, and I just decided, because these are, um, I don't know, I just decided to go a la natural with these, so there we go, I'm going to take my white t-shirt, and I'm going to gently wipe off the excess And when you're using your molds, you don't have to use your mold exactly as it was designed. This, this is a feather, and this is a feather. And I had to cut off part of the feather in order to make it wrap around. And then I used a small feather here in the center. So, you know, you don't have to use your mold exactly as it was designed. You can, um, you know, you can cut it up and just use parts of it and all right there we go and if you want you can go on with another layer um, you can let the you can leave the wax on for a little while if you want to and um, let it start drying before you wipe it off if you want it to look even more aged you can kind of just blot it I like I like the wiped look 
So I think it looks really, really cool. I actually think I like this side better than I like this side. Well, I like both. Okay. So there you go. That is my tutorial on doing these aged antique looking um, ornaments. I'm going to do those other two that we started with off camera. But I hope you enjoyed and I hope you are inspired. Um, <clears throat> you know, at this point, I really do think you need molds um, to do something like this. But there may be other things you can use out there to adhere on and do this sort of thing. I just, I'm not, you know, maybe you could do stuff like buttons. Um you know, metals, things. You could make them uh, mixed media of some type, but, you know, sequins, things like that. But these are uh, specific. I wanted them aged and antique. So there you go. Thanks for watching. And um, be sure to, to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be notified every time I upload. I'm really, really working towards that 30 videos in 30 days. And after that, we'll see where we're at. I do know that we will be doing a giveaway on December 1st. So stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching. Bye, guys.